Boom. Hello to everybody who's watching. Um, we're here today to just kind of talk about our experiences with doing game jams in the past. Not that we've done many, but we figured it would be a helpful resource to anybody who might be interested in getting into doing game jams. Right now, you know, it's February 6th. Uh, another one is going to be coming out February 20th is when it starts, right? Yes. Yeah, so if anybody's thinking about getting into that and wants to know kind of what they're getting into or for future ones, you know, this will be just as relevant. Uh, don't expect to know anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. Not everything, just anything. You're going to go into this and you're going to look at your TV or your computer screen <laughs> and you're going to be like, what the f am I doing? <laughs> And that, that is gonna be how it starts, no matter what, if you're if, when you're beginning. Uh, aside from that, game jams are usually a week of polling and a week of doing it. Yeah, so they'll like put out a, uh, a topic or like a list of things that you can potentially end up making and people will vote on it. And then the day the game jam starts is when they're gonna tell you what was chosen. So the idea is that you're not gonna be able to kind of really prepare much ahead of time. Uh, of course, you can look at the list and give yourself a vague idea for each individual topic, but I'm overall, gonna, yeah, you're just going to be thrown into it day of. I'm going to make an assumption that bigger teams will do that. They'll have separate rounds where it's like, oh, sure. okay, so you pick option A, B, or C, they're going to have plans for A, B, and C, and you're going to stick to it. And so that, that kind of goes to the second point of, you can be malleable, and how you want to approach it, but you should definitely stick with the plan, right? Like, and don't be, don't beat yourself down either if things just don't go away. Shit, if you don't finish it either, don't tear your hair out, you yeah. know? Just as long as you're kind of committed to it, half play, most of the way, right? Don't ruin your health and whatever, but there's a high likely chance you will. You're gonna stay up, no, You're gonna yes. tear your hair out trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You're just not gonna eat. You're just gonna live off of energy drinks for a while. I know <laughs> I did that. You don't operate as well when you're tired and when you're hungry. So take care of yourself. Like that is one of the biggest things that I can, you know, give as advice for going into this is you know, maybe have a food plan before, you know, maybe meal plan for the week so you don't have to spend time cooking, but make sure you have food. You know, takeout pizza only goes so far. Also, uh, something from my personal experience, uh, I would suggest that before you get into the game jam, upload a simple project. Make your profile before the game jam starts, and then just make a test project that's like just whatever, nobody's gonna see, and upload it just to see what that process is like. Because, uh, I finished my project and <laughs> I totally didn't post the thing like finally with like 40 something seconds left of the game jam. <laughs> like, it tells you how much time was left. I'll give you a screenshot to edit in like so people can see it was literally under a minute left before the, the like thing closed. It was like the school website. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was that kid sprinting down the hallway to put it in the teacher's desk before the second hand <laughs> ticked over to, you know, 301. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just know what you're getting into first. And actually, one of the biggest issues for me was um, I didn't have a title. Like, I actually made a game. <laughs> My very first game didn't have a title when I was making it. It was just, you know, the game. And you need a title so to submit it. And I was just like, that's a hard one. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's it's like any a character in MMO when you don't know what you're getting into. You're like, oh, it's huh. Gotta, it's gotta be right. <laughs> it ended up being something so stupid, but it was like, you just gotta put something in there. And you need to have a thumbnail. <laughs> so, you know, have like these are things that you need to keep in mind as to the things outside of coding the game that you're gonna need to have available. You know, a name for the game, you know, your, a description that you're gonna type up you know, tags you want to put on it, thumbnail, all those kinds of things. So just orient yourself with itch.io before you actually get into the game jam. It'll save you a lot of stress at the end. Ah! Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, they are that one. Game jams are usually, well, the Brackies ones every three, four months, right? Um, Where's it? They do it twice a year. Yeah, I think it's same annually. Yeah, so six months. Okay. 
So another big thing about these game jams is that they are oftentimes framed as a competition. And I'm gonna tell you right now, just kind of discard that fact from your mind because it's that's not the point. The point of this is for you to experience what it's like to really get into making and publishing a game. You had you had the most experience out of all of us, so we'll do it, John. How's, how's your experience? Um, I didn't have a computer for years. <laughs> I only recently got a computer, like a little more than a year ago. Um, but it made me feel more comfortable though, working with games, like especially the how to say this, like assembling and seeing what works and being comfortable looking back at like uh, you know, either tutorials or reference guides to see you know what code does what, which settings do which. Um, I learned about stage design. Oh my god, playtesting! Playtesting is so important. You have to make time for it. Yeah. Because that's the only way you'll know if your game really works, if there's like bugs or things that you need to actually fix. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, mostly I specialize in music production and video cinematics, so I helped add those to our game and a lot of people actually liked it. You were the reason that our game looks good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I would say for game jams, like if you know anybody who either an artist or does music or video editing, you know, if they're down to work with you in it, it definitely saves time because it's one less thing you have to do on your own and it speeds up and smooths things along a little bit better. It's uh it's kinda like you, you learn you learn from each other, like you, you learn different skills. So definitely I say the time crunch the one that we give from the time crunch is that it forces you to think with constraints. So even if you don't finish a game, you could end up making something else afterwards from what you picked up in that one game. Because after we finished uh, this game, I went to go learn uh, some coding in uh, an engine called uh, Godot. Uh, and uh, it's similar to Unity, but not as powerful. The one thing I will say though, is that it does everything within Godot. You don't have to have the uh, the visual, actual visual. Yeah, yeah, the visual, visual studios. Yeah, you don't have to have visual studios open uh, side by side. But it, does, it does it all together as one thing. So it saves you screen space for one. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, it made me work harder on my music. I'm already on my fourth album now since we did the, <laughs> the game show. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely is a good learning experience. Because right now I have like two game demos and I'm still working on this, you know, work. Yeah. Work, work eats your time. The, the game jam makes you realize how short a week is. Especially like, Yeah, okay. Really, like, every day that you get counts. It, but at the end, it's, it's fun though. Like, even if you don't finish the game, you can still learn a lot from it. And yeah, like you said, <laughs> if you can get a team, do so. Because my first game jam, I did completely solo. I did all the coding, all of the sprite work, all of the music, everything I did myself. It was good. But okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. It was it was hella stressful. Like it was to the point my wife told me after I was done, she was like, you need to warn me the next time you do one of these so I can have like a week plan of things to do, like just understanding that I'm not going to see you for a week. <laughs> Which, I mean, fortunately, when I had these two guys working with me the second time around, that wasn't as big of a deal. Like, she was almost in that mentality of, okay, you know, I'll bring you your food and, like, I'll leave you alone. It's like, you know, I'm allowed to exist as a human being, you know? Like, but yeah, um, if you are going to end up going in solo, I would suggest Know, getting used to get all of the programs that you're going to use beforehand and get used to working with them. And I mean, I kind of like doing sprite work. Like, I was pretty proud of the sprite work that I did, especially for my first game. I mean, I like the second game well enough as well. But yeah, the first game, I was pretty happy with at least how some of the things came out. That was very good. Though. It was just the boss rush. Yeah, it was basically just a boss rush. Yeah. Like, it was a 2D side-scrolling boss. I'll put the links to, like, the games that we actually made 
uh, in the description so that way you can see like what we put out there just as a means of I guess a comparison and getting an idea of what might come out of the game to make things much easier. Oh my god, no which version of the game you're using. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes, seriously. What version you're using and what features work. Because we actually had to downgrade <laughs> our, our Unity versions in order to make certain functions work. Yeah, it was so bad. It's like, how did this get pushed into the live service yes. when it literally takes this whole section and just destroys it? I guess that's one of the issues I had when we worked on the Game Jam last, was that if we were using different versions, it wasn't compatible to open with your version. I think that was, like, there was no back forward play. Yeah. Which... Sometimes, there are some things that are, but there are some things that are not. Yeah. And you don't know until, like, you get there and something doesn't work. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty annoying. And yeah, I'll be sure that you, if you are in a team, that you have, you know, times set aside to get together with people. You've got, like, you know, a Google Doc or something that you can share all your files through. Google Doc is fantastic. I mean, for what it is, it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's Does he have to pay for Dropbox now? Only after a certain amount. Oh. That's so how a lot of them are, though. Yeah. It's like you get X amount of free space and then you have to pay. Mm -hmm. So I just call you. I, I don't think you're going to be able to verbally tell me the entire document. I wouldn't even know what to write it in. You, you ju you're just giving me the freaking ones and zeros and <laughs> random letter strings that make up your entire document. It's like 500 pages long. Right, you're like, all right, just type this out and then run it. It'll work. What if I send you a picture? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like a picture would be more useful. So I, I would say if you can, if it's in your budget, have external hard drives and then use like the cloud stuff as like a backup. Yeah. yeah. Especially like if you're meeting with people, it makes it easier to get a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you can be physically present with people, it's ideal. Mm -hmm. But it's that's not always practical. But again, it's, it's it's more like a drill. It's like a practice. Like it's, if you want to see it as more as like a, a fun way to practice, like okay, we're just using constraints. What can we make? Because chances are there's going to be at least one idea that you'll be able to run with after the jam is over. Yeah, like we got. I would say we got kind of lucky that the last one was chaos because that was way more open. -ended. Yeah. It was almost too open ended. Yeah, it was like you could make whatever you wanted. Hey, bro. Not only did you get a computer, like, you know, for the first time, yeah. like, way more recently than most people, it's also a brick. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. You're like, dude, this game is, uh, you know, 64 bit. I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> Super Mario 64, mm, you know, it starts to chug. <laughs> For real. <laughs> but when we all sat down together, the like day, the first day of the jam that we all did together, we started throwing out ideas, and we had one idea, and then that just kind of kept on getting built on and molded until it was none of the original ideas were recognizable for what they were, but the end product was its own unique thing, and that was kind of cool. I think. <laughs> that dialogue voice. <laughs> <I think. laughs> what thing that I think I want to expand upon was maybe with you guys as a solo thing is that first level. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would want to expand a bit more of that because that was very interesting. Apparently, that was the difficult one. I, I know it blew my mind. Like people thought our game was so hard. Did they? Wait. So, okay. Right, I'm really curious in terms of comments because I'm assuming you guys read them. I'm kind of like just. They were mostly positive. Yeah. Did they say the boss was the hardest? No. Or people, first level one was the hardest? Most people didn't get to the boss. Uh, <laughs> most people did not beat the game. Oh, man. <laughs> like, I, there were so many comments of, dude, it looks cool and all, but like, I can't beat level one. <laughs> So, yeah, level well, one was kind of what I designed. And, yeah. but I don't know. It seemed really intuitive for me because yeah. you know, like all I did was make some blocks and have gravity effect. Yes. And then you just, it was get to the end type of thing. Yeah, it was just a simple platform. There was no enemies. There was no anything that you had to worry about. It was maybe, just get there. Maybe it would have been easier if I had if we added arrows to give direction because I, that was probably the most confusing part. It's like. 
Well, where do I go? Well, I can only go this way. Right. But if I do, if I move certain things, things fall, and that changes the stage. I really like that idea. But I do find it hilarious. <laughs> That was the hardest. She's not really a gamer, but my mom beat this and she's not really a gamer, so uh... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it might be the lack of direction. I think that was the biggest key thing. Because there was some... There's... You could go right, right? Mm -hmm. And then, I guess the next option... Uh, you know, you can do that, just know that you can only have one project that's actually technically linked to the game jam. So if you're going to do these multiple things, you know, maybe an easy mode, maybe, you know, a WebGL version versus download version, just remind people to go back to the original page and like vote on that because that's the only place that voting is going to be able to occur. Yeah. But yeah, everybody thought the first stage was so insanely hard. I think that's hilarious. I do too. Because, like, I mean, I guess as the dev, you play the stages enough to make sure they work, that you get good at it. But I'm like, I beat the... <laughs> I mean, I imploded. I felt like the boss was harder than level one, okay? I'll, I'll say it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that, that boss was nerfed to hell. You've seen the... Yeah. <laughs> I remember! Like, you'll... Because you'll have these moments of ingenuity and creativity. And you're like standing at all because you've created this monstrosity. <laughs> it was gonna be worse. <laughs> it, it was, was yeah, at that boss, you decided. When I was there, when he was first making it, that thing was just gonna one shot you over and over and over again. It, let's put it this way. The boss required seven hits to beat. In 20 minutes of playtesting, which how it was set originally, I never landed more than uh, four hits. Yeah, see, like, what are you expecting, bro? So, yeah, we, you know, after much pressure from Jose to uh, tune it down a bit, I did. I mean, you couldn't even be that. What are you talking about me pressuring you? <laughs> I mean, I was just going to have the mentality of get good, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and it was gonna be worse than that. There was literally a whole other feature to the boss that I just couldn't get to work. Was the fire right. one? Was the fire platform from the bottom? No, no, it was gonna be like the final boss. Like, not only was it gonna like do like the platform moving nonsense mm -hmm. that it does, it was gonna shoot laser beams at you from the eyeball. Yeah. They were gonna like track. I just couldn't get like that track. You were so from. close though. I really I was really close. I was like, you were so close on making that code work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I was really wondering what. I guess. Because I had done something so similar in my first game mm -hmm. where there, there was an entity and he would like shoot a laser beam and it would just like track top to bottom from the screen. Mm -hmm. So I was going to do that, but instead of like tracking, it was just going to like basically invisibly track the player until it was ready to shoot and then it would just lock its position and then shoot. Mm -hmm. But for some odd reason, I just couldn't get it to work, you know, and that'll happen. You'll have ideas that you just can't figure out in time to put it into the game. Mm -hmm. it, it sucks, but it happens. Just write them down. Yeah, sorry, yeah, exactly. I'll come back to it later. Yeah. It's crazy, like, when you finish the game jam, like, within a week after it's done, you start looking back at your game and you're like, oh, crap, I could have did this, oh, I could have did that. And, like, for some reason, it seems almost closer, like, within reach. Like, you're, mm -hmm. there's no more time constraint. This is possible. <laughs> yeah. Like, you will have the retroactive inspiration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for you sure. will... It, I guess you could say that about a lot of things in life where you'd be like, man, I could have done a lot of things different. But this is a situation where you can just go, you, you can just it. go back and do it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so I would say that if people give you feedback and like ask for stuff, that's usually a good thing because that means they liked your game enough to suggest something. Right. 
Like, and then ignore them. You gotta learn to separate the haters to the positive criticism. Yeah. I know a lot of people get hung up on mm -hmm. people being negative. Just, just slide it away mm -hmm. and focus on people saying, hey, you could try doing this. Like, there's no reason not to be polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, constructive criticism versus just ripping something apart is totally different. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if, if everybody hates your game, then clearly there's something going on. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, people still who are just like... Clicks. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all attention is good attention. <laughs> you know, but you know, if somebody just posts, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and all the other comments are like, hey, this is okay, you can do this, this, and this. You know, just ignore the guy who said this sucks. Anybody who bothers to take the time to say that on somebody's content, just is an ass anyway. Yeah, they're not helpful, they're not useful, just ignore it. The other option though, and this is my preferred option, this is what I do, <laughs> is you use that negative energy to channel your spiteful energy to make something productive. That's what I do. You know, you gotta teach it to the haters. It's like, oh, I made something better now. It's, it's <laughs> almost like a, the No Man's Sky evolution. Yeah. Where the guy took like all of the criticism that everybody was just slewing on and he just sat in a room with like all of that. He just funneled all of the negativity to himself and just sat down forever and then like just kept on working on the game until it was good. Yeah, I mean, you could just do that. All right, I won't say that's good for your head, but it's very effective. All right, yeah. people will handle that kind of thing differently. Honestly, the first thought that I had after my first game jam was it really feels like it's, it facilitates crunch culture, which I don't really like. Right. So. Crunching is inevitable. Crunching is inevitable. But I guess the main difference here is that it's your choice. Yeah, exactly. It's self-imposed. So you, you need to be able to acknowledge, hey, maybe I shouldn't fall into this kind of like crunch culture mentality. You take your time, have fun with it, because nothing ruins the fun of, you know, making something than hating the process. Yeah. Like, you know, I... I really enjoy making things in Unity. Like when something comes together and it works and it looks good, it's such an incredibly good feeling. But when you've sat there for so long that you you almost just like you don't see what's the there anymore. You just like bitter. Yeah, exactly. You're <laughs> yeah. just like good. It's done. Throw it away. Don't look at it anymore. It's it's finished. Yeah. I'm going to bed for the next five days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'd say use the experience as a way to, I guess, preview game development on small, how to say, a time scale. Because obviously, this at least gives you a challenge. It presents you the challenge, the experience to deal with it, and and you can find out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And then you can adjust that for when you make games outside of the jam. Like I found I do not operate on no sleep. I do not, like, I, I will fall asleep at the desk. And, like, well. <laughs> that is hilarious to me that you can just like fall asleep at your computer desk. And I'm just like, four hours of sleep, that's normal. <laughs> it's not good, but it's normal. <laughs> I have a very unhealthy sleep schedule, even outside of like game jams. It's, it's awful. It is awful. I scold her. I went to bed at 8 a.m. What the hell are you I, doing? Look, sometimes I lose track of time and I'm doing other things and then it's like, oh, the sun has been out for the past two hours. I guess I should go to bed. People are coming in for today. <laughs> what did I miss? It was or something. Like, yeah, I know it was 4.30. I was like, I don't know, John. But I'm also like... But yeah, and like if you work, you can either acknowledge that you're not going to get as much done and just be okay with that. The small little things are perfectly fine. Like I've seen, yeah. there was one game that I played, I mean, I don't know how long it took the guy to make, it was pretty simple, but I, it was just still somehow so incredibly amusing to me that I literally played it until I completely 100%ed it. Yeah. It was, so, you know, small does not equal bad. We got some other things to keep in mind, but some things are just like one room little things. And some people really like that, you know, myself included. There were some really, really fun. So like, don't sit down and think you have to make this grandiose thing that's gonna like completely blow your mind. You're, you're not making Skyrim in the game jam. It's what? not happening. So quality over quantity, even in the capacity of the game itself. Mm -hmm. 
And yep, sometimes simple is better. Simple tends to work better. Yes. Especially when you only have a week. Less moving parts. Yeah, less moving parts, less things to mess up. Because simple can be better. You know, if you feel like you have the time, if it sounds interesting, definitely do a game jam. If you're inclined in any way, it's a lot of learning. But you will walk away with knowledge that's going to be very useful moving on. Like, I definitely learned a ton from my first game jam that I was able to carry into the second one that made certain parts of it a lot easier. So they build on each other. So I know even if your first experience is kind of rough and you're like, well, I didn't hate it enough to never do it again, you know, approach another one and you'll find that they get easier over time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything else really to say. Like, that's pretty much... Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we said the same thing yeah, a million times over, but uh, that's, that's all right. Until the end of the game chat. Yeah. We can give you another review of what we thought, what they changed. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it would be kind of cool to almost like record our progress of like working through the game jam. That's going to bring that up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, look out for that. If we don't do it, we don't do it. But like, We'll, we'll try to get that out there. Like, yeah. like we'll, we'll record things and just, you can see the process, you know, firsthand. And obviously it'll be after the jam is over that you get to see that, but there's, you'll see the internal workings of it. Yeah, there's also the thing that I want to bring up with at least you and you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what we should do is... So we should all... What? <laughs> <laughs> I actually hear that. <laughs> Sell the company. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we should actually do is like, not just take progress, but we should, because I didn't really get a chance to um, play test a lot of other things people played. Oh, right. Me. So we should also go, instead of just doing our stuff, we should make a series where we play other people's games and rate it. Oh, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I said I was doing a game builder. Yeah, so you're <laughs> he's, he's already experienced that. Yeah, it's actually right. really fun because you learn and you see, oh, so this is how you do this. And the fact that the game lets you actually adjust the code is insane. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty wild that you can actually edit other people's stuff. But yeah, we should we should try doing that. I think that would be a fun little fun little thing to add on to yeah. the game jam stuff. And actually, you bring up game builder is a good uh, a good thing to mention. It's like if you happen to have a switch and like an extra thirty dollars lying around. And like you don't have a laptop where you can bring, you know, actual Unity wherever you go if you are, you know, away from home but have free time. Um, go ahead and get the Game Builder Garage on the Switch and just play around with that. You can almost make prototype the game that you want to make there. It's much simpler, mm -hmm. but when you know how things need to interact in order to do what you want them to do, you can already have a framework when going into Unity or Godot or whatever else it is that you're using and already know what pieces need to be linked up and then you just have to figure out how that engine is going to link them that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was cool. Yeah. All right, till, till next time. Yep. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you after the game jam, probably. On the other side of the game jam. <laughs>